Kaiser Quartet. That was a beautiful A minor, boys, really. Let's, let's hear that A minor again one more time. Sounds beautiful in this room, doesn't it, right? Okay, let's, let's hear, let's turn that frown upside down and let's hear an A major. A bit too much for this room, maybe, right? So maybe we should search for something ambiguous between the two, maybe like an A suspended chord, A suspended. Maybe um, A diminished, can we hear that? I, I didn't say A dismembered, I said <laughs> A diminished. Okay, let's try, um, let's try A plus. Okay. Let's try uh, A tonal. Okay. Let's try uh, A track. The Kaiser Quartet, everybody. We're thrilled to be here. Uh, we're celebrating the release of our album Chambers that we did together. And uh, we're going to be focusing on the material from that album, but also playing uh, stuff from my catalog and the catalog of some other composers. Uh, but for now, we're going to start with a track called Sweet Burden, which is from Chambers. And this features Ingmar starting off with a viola solo that I hope is going to make you all cry. <laughs>
we're going to get the Kaiser Quartet involved again here. And uh, writing for a quartet for me was a, was a learning experience. Luckily, I had these guys here as my kind of laboratory. And um, it started to click when I started to write for them in particular. And I realized it's the same if I'm writing a song with a singer. I don't sit there and think, what's a cool song for a female voice? I'm sitting there maybe with Leslie Feist going, what's cool for her to sing? And it's the same with the Kaiser Quartet. Once I realized they were individuals with strengths and musical weaknesses, uh, I was able to write for them in more effective and sometimes torturous ways for them. Uh, but my first thought was, what is the role of the string quartet in pop music? Because I wanted to make a, a pop album. Like every album I make, I think of as a, uh, a popular music album, because I hope it's going to be music that will be popular. Simple as that. And um, so how do you think of the string quartet as a pop instrument? I think right away, you will probably think of this famous song from the 60s. <laughs> So this is treating the quartet a little bit like a band, kind of like their guitars and basses and even drums. It's very rhythmic, and it's what I would call chugging strings. That's the sort of Canadian word I would use. I don't know what that translates to uh, for you guys here in, in, in French, so I'll just go with like, un chugging, quoi, you know, un chugging. And, um, and so you know, the strings chugging was definitely not invented by, by the Beatles. I'm guessing they were probably thinking of some older piece as well, something a few hundred years back. Stop, stop, stop. It's true. Someone in the audience went like, Tss, the minute they heard that. It's true. We've heard this so many times. And like, when you hear this, you just picture this kind of very quaint, um, what we would call prancing. You know, there's dancing in English, but there's also prancing. You know, that's like a whole other thing. Um, shout out to all the prancers out there watching the live stream. Um, <laughs> and so this needs to be turned into something much more gangsta and, and melancholy. And, and I think we should switch it from major to minor. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, an another moment of intense string chugging occurred around 100 years ago, and here in Paris as well. And this was music by Stravinsky that actually, believe it or not, caused a riot back in 1913. It really made me think, what, what could happen musically at any concert that would cause you to riot, you know? It's very difficult to imagine, right, that everyone was sitting in a concert hall and they were moved so negatively by this music that they just had to tear shit up, you know? And I wonder, you know, if I offended you tonight, it would just be, you would just tweet, you know? You wouldn't riot, right? <laughs> okay, let's hear what was so offensive back in 1913. This is an excerpt from Le Sacre du Printemps, The Rite of Spring by Stravinsky. <gasps> I made a mistake, I made a mistake. It wasn't the chorus yet. Here comes the chorus, ready? It's the catchy part. Here it comes again, catchy part. Sing along. Everybody sing along with Stravinsky. Hashtag Team Stravinsky. So all of this I listened to with the kind of ear of a, of a rap producer looking for the break on a piece of vinyl. Except I wasn't listening to a piece of vinyl, I was listening to a string quartet and with the sort of unconscious history of classical music that we all have stored in the back of our brain. And so all of this went in, including the Beatles, including uh, a little minor Mozart and some Stravinsky, and it made this song called Advantage Points.
jerk Talk about how hard he works Come and be a flirt I'm an expert Wipe off this smirk Do you like rap? Well, so happens I'm so ballin' What I mean between you and me There's a gap, don't fall in What a funny way to approach music I must be stopped You got your eye on the top I dropped at the bottom of the pops Harmony's French But the melancholy melody's so slavic Whether I rap fast or slow That rap flow is polysyllabic From the minute I'm awake It's a great day to get this cake Polishing the mixtape Let me fixate on a flow in 6-8 I'm a lot of things But a left-wing singer-songwriter I'm not I'm a lot of things But a right-wing singer-songwriter I'm not Let's smoke all that Yeah, we can hang around Like a ball sack Get high than a tall hat On top of a rather tall chap a cyborg version of George Gershwin I'm a Tin Pan fan Famous in Paris I'm embarrassed Cause I can't, can't, can Never disappoint a crowd, my god I just play what they want like a jukebox or an iPod Play a song here, write a show there Wanna tell my dad so there Now that I got what I want, I'll be honest I'm so scared It's all downhill from a spot that you always thought you deserved It's getting on my nerves everywhere that it go, music nerds You write a dumb questions, cause the song has them all answered You write a smart questions, cause the song has them all answered So come and listen to a schmuck, talk about a bunch of random stuff Mouth hole so cold like the South Pole. I'm a little brown. Sometimes you might hear me doing something along the lines of this, you know? And this is, this is one of the greatest musical inventions. It's called arpeggio. And this has existed for hundreds of years, you know? It, it was far back, some, I guess, monk in Italy realized that you can play a chord, or you can play a chord by playing one note of the chord at a time, right? This is simultaneous. So it's not music yet, it's just a chord. But if you play one note at a time, then something is unfolding in real time, something approaching music. Maybe you'll like it better if it's like this. But you hear it everywhere. You can also hear it in great 50s music, old timey music. further back. Uh, you guys know the song In the Mood by Glenn Miller? You know that one? Also arpeggios. Let's, let's have Ingmar on the viola do this one. A one, a two, a one, two, three, four. <laughs> So, you know, it, it, it's kind of crazy. It's kind of crazy. You know, you, 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 get on your feet, get on your feet. No, snip, snippity snap. But imagine this music with no arpeggios then you don't want to tap your toes or snap your fingers or, or do nothing. Let's, let, let's listen to this for contrast. In the mood with no arpeggios. One, two, one, two, three, four. I 
actually, for our streaming viewers, this is what a lot of um, French singer-songwriter music sounds like. It's called, it's called, it's called Chanson Française, and usually that's what, like, let's hear it. It's usually like, you know, it's just like. And then I whisper. I am with her. And so I whisper. I am with her. With her sounds like whisper. It's a jeu de mots, you see. Whisper. I am with her. Did you see what I did there? Some high level chanson française shit I just did. Any chanson française fans here tonight? After I said that, anybody? You should be ashamed of yourselves. Be proud. Are you fans of chanson française? Be proud. For yeah, the minor version. The minor version of your national anthem. Yeah, it's minor. It's sad because you're not proud. Be proud of your chanson française. You know? Be proud of your Benabar. They don't know who he is. Be proud of Vincent de Lerme. They don't know who he is. Okay, arpeggios go even further. Let's see, what, what else do we got? Um, let's see, uh, how about the, the Hotel California? That's a classic, right? Also all arpeggios, ready? One, a two, a one, two, three, and... Sounds like Vivaldi, right? Quartet, everybody. Mm. Okay, I, I, I'd like to apologize for something I said earlier. I feel like I might have insulted or made fun of French culture there for a second. And I did it in front of other countries, you know, who are watching. And so I really just want to apologize. And I want to tell you there is still one great French composer still living that I really respect, and I can say, forget chanson française, forget rap, forget everything. This is really the best France has to offer, I think. Another arpeggio, the Kaiser Quartet are gonna play it, and it's by the composer, D. Punk. Punk. This is a piece for the solo piano one fans out there. This is called Dot.
How about a hand for Martin Benz on the cello? You might have seen Martin using a technique called pizzicato. That's when he plucks the strings with his fingers uh, instead of using his bow, something like a jazz bass player would do. Let's just hear a couple of simple, simple notes of pizzicato, a little example here. Something just oddly satisfying about that, right? Okay, uh, how about a hand for Ingmar on the viola? Uh, Ingmar is going to demonstrate tremolo, which is basically like it sounds, trembling of the string. You know, you hear this in a Hitchcock movie probably. It's suspenseful. Uh, let's hear some scary, scary viola tremolo right now. It sounds very scary, but he's just such a cute teddy bear that it's, <laughs> it's hard to sort of keep the fear, you know? It's such a cute little tremolo. How about Jansen on second violin, everybody? Jansen Folkers. <laughs> he's going to demonstrate, uh, in English we call it our harmonic but it has a great French name, which is also a synonym for a kind of bean they have here in France. It's called a flageolet. And, uh, and this is used by, by basically putting the finger on the string, but not all the way, and it creates this very sort of spectral, spacey sound. I think you're gonna see the sound somewhere up there, up on the roof. Let's have a listen to some spacey flageolet. I like the ending. That was good. That was a good ending. How about Adam on first violin, everybody? Adam Soylinski. <laughs> and this is a, a comical effect uh, using a bouncing of the bow. It's simply called one of the greatest French words of all time, ricochet. Let's have a listen to some ricochet. It's like a drunk mouse laughing. Right? <laughs> okay, now again, I, I, you know, this is where my sort of producer's ear kicks in, and I start to think, couldn't we just make a beat in a way? Couldn't we just make a whole song out of this? Let's see if we can just you know, do some simple pizzicato, just quarter notes, you know? Pizzicato, tremolo, flageolet, drunk mouse. Yeah, just in, in order there, in order. <laughs> So I just want to take a chance to apologize for something I said earlier. Um, you know, I often just kind of runs away with me. I say things there on stage, the camera's on, you know, and I get the adrenaline rush, and I say some, some shit that I just regret later. Um, this is something I said for about the last 15 years. I said I was a musical genius. You know, th th that was the first lyrics that I, that I sang was when I said I said I was a musical genius. But I just want to clarify that you know, the cameras are on me now. And so I, I really do believe I'm a musical genius right now. But when I get backstage, take off the bathrobe, I'm not a musical genius anymore. Because I think when people get on stage or in front of a camera, they're, they're living out their fantasies. You know, like I mentioned Kanye West before. He has a song called I Am A God. Now, he's clearly not a god, right? We established already that he's just kind of an asshole. But <laughs> it's his fantasy. And, and maybe the guys from Daft Punk wished they could become musical robots. And, and I like it better when an artist that I like, I get to see their dreams, I get to see their nightmares. This is why I love rappers so much, because they're living out their fantasies. No one believes that Rick Ross is a drug dealer, but he kind of sounds like one, and that's what we like. Um, so I want to clarify uh, using, of course, the language of music. Um, so this song, this is the first time I we're ever really performing it. Um, so. 
This is a, a I just need a different vantage point here. Let me see if I can. That's <laughs> nice. Not bad. <laughs> this song is called, and this is very important because there are brackets in this title, parenthèse. This is called, not a, in brackets, musical genius. <laughs> Not a musical genius. Not a musical genius. I guess I lied. Not a musical genius. So now I'm confessing why. I wanted you to believe in it. But deep down I was petrified of not being a genius. And that's why it was self-described. Nice one, guys. I'm glad you feel the same as me, guys. Really. Well, the phrase was fake, but it was too late to step on the brakes. The cake was baked, the name replaced. And they say that you cremate what you create. So I raised the stakes. Changing tastes, I made mistakes. I play your hate in a famous face. But in this case, the hate's misplaced. I was overjoyed just to be employed. I had the plan, I had the ploy. Avoid Freud and avoid the void. The composer, the poser, the man, the boy. But that's all over, it's meaningless. Did you think I was serious? I'm an unusual pianist, but not a musical genius. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Once again, the Kaiser Quartet. And thank you to Blogotech, Arte, for making this happen. The team for making the live stream. Thank you for celebrating Chambers with us. Have a great evening, Paris. Have a great evening, the rest of the world. Good night. <laughs>